What's up, guys? It's TRT77 here with my week 7 game of WPF Magic Up Division. This week we play MS23 and the British Blazikins, and you got his team on the screen in front of you. Um, so far, we haven't really, I don't think, played uh, a more balanced team. This is probably semi balanced, if anything, but having Mega Venusaur, Rotom Wash, Zapdos. This team is a lot bulkier, and this is the first team, you know, I was questioning one thing earlier when I was playing the previous teams was Where did all the Melmetal checks go? They're all on the same. <laughs> he's got Mudsdale, he's got Arcanine, he's got Rotom Wash, which is probably the best check in the game uh, He's got Zapdos, also an amazing check And uh, it's a very, it's, it, it's a matchup that's not great for Melmetal, but I think I can still take advantage of it uh, So I have Melmetal on this set with a Toxic Protect set, uh, with a lot of Spidef the Spidef is there because we can take hits ably from Rotom Wash. But the whole point is the Toxic Chip, if it wears down on Rotom Wash and uh, Zapdos. Double Iron Bash still does a lot of damage from 252 Adamant. But um, that's not what I'm going to be looking to do with Melmetal. What I'm more looking to do is I want to Toxic down those checks for those Mons. Because at the same time, while he has to choose his checks for Melmetal, he has to choose his checks for Urshifu as well. And honestly, the biggest... I think this is the weirdest thing ever, but like... The biggest threat to his team is Articuno Galar. So this team's steel type is Cobalion, and I've voiced my opinions on Cobalion in the past. And uh, if you if 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 you've watched KJ's videos, he's voiced his opinion on it as well. We both share an opinion that we're not huge fans of Cobalion as a Pokemon. But the main thing is it's a steel type that's not a bird spam resist on a team with a Mega Venusaur, which kind of is a little confusing for me. I assume it's there for speed to your connect here, but. That just makes me feel like I have freedom to click Hurricane and freedom to click Brave Bird. And that is why I've got both Talonflame and Articuno Galar coming in this week. Articuno Galar is a real matchup problem for his team. Uh, either one shots or two shots every single Pokemon on this team. Freezing Glare just does so much uh, to a lot of his mons. His Hydreigon does not appreciate a Hurricane. And... Uh, should we get honestly if, if we get lucky and we maybe like catch a double into rk9 or something we get one competitive boost and there's scenarios where if he's not spidef rotom or if he's not spidef uh or if he if he's not spidef rotom or bulky zapdos we can just 6 so from there with articuno and uh it's got 72 hp because that makes i'm pretty sure that makes draco and dark pulse well out of range like uh quite well out of range of Okoing from uh, Scarf Hydreigon, which is a threat to us. Um, we've got Urshifu Choice Bandit this week. I haven't brought the Bandit set yet, and I just thought, what better time to test it than against a balanced team? He can bring Cobalion, which is a problem because Cobalion is a good check to Urshifu in that it gets a justified boost, and Max Fizz Def Cobalion takes nothing from Wicked Blow. But it does not appreciate close combat, and... I'm, I'm, I, the thing is, I just know that I just have to be careful with my timing when I use Urshifu in this matchup. And uh, that's probably the, the biggest role it's going to have. Uh, Brody, Mega Slowbro is coming back. Future Side is free as hell against this team. Like, Hydreigon being the only switch into... If, if Hydreigon is a switch into Slowbro and I just teleport on it each time, that's just so much momentum for me. Because all I have to do at that point is, first I have to scout if he's choice locked. If he's not choice locked... Then we outspeed and kill with either uh, Talonflame, Articuno, Galar, or we can take any hit for the Melmetal or Nidoqueen. Nidoqueen does not die to a Scarf Draco. And uh, we can just do a lot of damage or just kill it. So I'm not super worried about Hydreigon, but outside of that, Future Sight is really something that bothers this team. Teleporting around is really fun overall against this team. And. Uh, Slowbro is just here mainly as my Barascular check because based on the team I'm bringing, a lot of it doesn't appreciate Choice Band Barascular and Slowbro just completely just shuts that thing down. So this is the 6 we're going into the game with guys and now I'll just jump into the game guys. Now jumping into the game guys, um, looking at his team the first thing I can say is I'm really surprised. Um, I'm really not sure how come we don't see either Rotom Wash or Zapdos, but I'm not complaining by any means. I think, honestly, both those things not being the huge boon to our team. 
huge boon to our chances of winning this game. But looking at his team, honestly, he doesn't have a hurricane resist. And considering that we would not die to Scarf Hydreigon in any situation, which is the only thing on this team, other than maybe a Scarf Barrascuda that outspeeds uh, Articuno no Galar, I think my best lead is going to be Articuno no Galar here. And he leads Arcanine, and off the bat, we get the competitive boost. And we are going to knock out Arcanine straight off the bat. This is a great start. And right now, when I look at my... Look at my, I mean, obviously, you guys can't see because it it's the replay, but my special attack stat shows 698 on Articuno Galar. I haven't... I, honestly, the only time I really gave the ability competitive any attention was when Wolfie ran like that competitive Milotic back in the day. But like, jeez, this is, this is like a great start for us. He goes in a Hydreigon, so off the bat that tells me he's Scarf, he does click high Dark Pulse. Now if we get, if we don't get flinched here, we land the Hurricane, Hydreigon's down and I think we just win the game right now. But we get flinched. Um, to be fair, there was, all, there was a chance to flinch and a chance to miss, quite a significant chance to miss Hurricane. But I felt like I wanted to go for Broke early because like I got the competitive boost and I pretty much okoed his whole team outside of maybe a Spidaff or a Matisse and a, or like a Sash Barrascuda. So here I'm going to switch out because I want to preserve my Scarfer just in case because I want to have a Mon um, faster than Barrascuda. But at the same time, uh, I just don't want to give him the free kill on Hydreigon. I know he's choice Scarf now because obviously he outsped our Scarf Articuno. I have the easiest switch into Urshifu here. And uh, I'm just going to click U-turn. I thought of clicking Poison Jab because the Aromatis switch in was very, very free here. But I didn't want to give him a stamina boost on Mudsdale or like just give him momentum all in all, even though we could just go slow, bro. I just thought if we, we U-turn here, we just go straight into Melmetal and I can get the Toxic off on Mudsdale because I really doubt he's keeping Aromatis in ever on Melmetal. So here we go into Melmetal. Uh... I'm expecting him to switch out here, and he does, and we get the Toxic off on Mudsdale. This is absolutely great for our plans. I'm going to switch into Slowbro here the first time, because I don't want to reveal Protect uh, just yet. Um, but he does get the Stealth Rocks up, which is sad, because we don't have Defog now. And I opted for Roost on the Talonflame set, kind of regretting it now. Um, but we don't have Defog, so now Articuno Galar is just a sack when it comes in, because it's only at 18%. But here, Mudsdale's in, Slowbro's in. I just have the easiest task of just clicking teleport. Go back out into Melmetal. Same thing, rinse and repeat at this point. Uh, he clicks Protect, which I, I now assume he's got Wish Protect, uh, Moonblast, and Coverage move. But I'm just gonna click Double Iron Bash again, and he is neither Stamina, and by the looks of it, not Max Defense Mudsdale, because we're not a choice plan, Mel Mel. That should not be doing that much damage. And uh, he's gonna... He's, he's down 22. Uh, we are EV Doubt Speed, Min Speed, Mudsdale. But I don't know if he's got any creep on. So I'm just gonna click Protect here. Just get the toxic damage. And he predicts me going into Gallon Flame. And uh, here I'm just gonna go... I'm gonna sack Articuno Gala here. I have no reason not to because... While I could go Slowbro, in case he clicked Toxic predicting Slowbro to come in, I just wanted to see if he had it or not, because he only showed Stealth Rock and Rock Slide. And he does click Earthquake this time around. Uh, now I'm just going to go into Slowbro, because I see no reason not to. I'm just going to click Teleport. He is definitely offensive, but obviously we're going to regenerate that whole, uh, um, that whole bit of health back, with regen because Slowbro's, Slowbro's not mega yet. And sorry, I forgot to cross off Articuno Gala. I keep forgetting to cross off Mons, guys. I'm sorry. But, so here, Mudsdale is going to go down to the Toxic Chip. And he goes into Mega Venusaur. Now, I know that we've got a, a lot of Spidef. And I know for a fact that if he is Max Modest, which is unlikely as hell. Because, in my experience using Mega Venusaur, it's always better off than being used as a Residual Chip Mon. Not so much a direct special attacker but it does have a, a pretty chunky special attack stat but i'm expecting if he's max modest he technically two shots us with earth power but not with protect and lefties so earth power i'm assuming from max modest the roll was 52 to 61 
and we get a lot off with double iron bash so my big thing here is we should live worst case we should be able to uh do more than heat recover with synthesis two shot with double iron bash as we will easily be able to take two earth powers with the protect and leftovers recovery and he does mega evolve and he clicks earth power and he crits us and that crit really sucks because this was our chance to get big chip off mega venus or early and now i'm res resorting to click protect here and he's going to get the freest synthesis of his life as he does and this is a bit unfortunate here but uh, i see no reason not to switch out into talon flame here uh he does click giga drain does like nothing but um he goes in aromatis i do click the brave bird we realized from that troll that is max physically defensive aromatis and here i see no reason not to just click u turn just go clean into nero queen and he clicks moon blast which uh, does about 19 which actually is not min investment i think i'm not sure actually that was either not min investment or like a slightly higher roll don't really matter too much he does click protect i'm just going to go for the sludge wave here nothing on his team switches in well to a sludge wave and he switches in venus omega and i knew for a fact knowing that he was max modest off the crit damage on earth power on mel metal that this boy is not got speed up he's maybe max hp but judging by this calc he's not even max hp uh and i know we've got a lot of speed on this nero queen so i know for a fact that we're going to outspeed and we're going to take out mega venus or here um right now honestly i thought he was going to go barascued up and i would just have gone slow bro at this point but he chooses to go into hydreigon and Here I'm left with a choice. Uh do I sack uh Nero Queen because he needs a very high roll on on Draco to kill, but it is still a roll. But if he does kill with Draco, he's at minus 2 and I'm in just such a good position because he just doesn't have switch ins to anything at that point and Mel Metal just cleans. And the other option is he doesn't click high, uh, Draco. He clicks Dark Pulse again and maybe he gets a flinch. again which really sucks at that point because then it's just sacking nero queen but again then we just go into urshifu and then we just click poison jab click poison jab uh kill aromatis then switch into slow bro with barascuda in and then we should be able to between slow bro and mel metal to beat hydreigon and barascuda so i don't see a way we really lose this without misplaying heavily here and i'm just going to stay in and go for the ice beam and he goes for the earth power which never killed and we get the ice beam off we know he's timid because he had to be timid to outspeed articuno galar so um here uh hydreigon is down to 3 we're down to 4 i've just i've got the freest dal flames for chen cuz again i know he's locked um and that's the importance of scouting in pokemon games i feel and getting the u turn off going back into mel metal there's nothing much aromatis can really do he does click wish here i know i just have to click double iron bash irrespective whatever happens i'm just clicking double iron bash i am keeping note that i only have four left and i'm not too concerned here as he does sack hydreigon here and we have got him down to just aromatis and barascuda here he is going to more than likely go into barascuda because i think it's time for him to go for the offense but i'm going to protect first get a little bit of health back and also scout what he's going to go for honestly here I'm going to sack Nero Queen. As much as y'all are probably asking me why why sack Nero Queen? Like you could just go freely freely into slow bro and you'll be just fine. I don't want to risk either the crit or the defense drop. We have the game in the bag. One less differential is not going to make or break me. Losing slow bro, we could actually potentially lose this game to Barascuda because I don't have sucker punch on this Urshifu. Talonflame doesn't outspeed. Nero Queen does Nero Queen dies to rocks. Mel metal I'm not sure if Mel metal takes a liquidation well or if it crits. So I don't want to take any risks or any chances here. The safest play sack Nido Queen to rocks. And now we are up we're up 4-2 still. I get the free switch in into slow bro. And now I can mega up to make sure one we just absolutely body his hits and two future sight kills him and three mega slow bro is just basically going to I can't get crit because of the shell armor ability. So even defense drops don't really matter. I'm just going to click future sight here. He's going to click wish. I'm going to teleport into Mel Metal. 
Like, if he wants to stay in, he can stay in. But I'm gonna go for the double iron bash. And we are going to take out a Romatisse here, guys. Uh, now all he's got left is the Varuscuda. And here I feel a lot safer, honestly, going in. First, actually, I'm gonna click Protect again. Yes, that's the best play. Just, just to get a little bit of health on Mel Metal, worst case. Go into Slowbro Mega, and he is locked into Liquidation. That is Choice Band damage. And he is locked into Liquidation. Here, I'm just gonna click the Slack off. It's just a matter of time at this point. Uh, he clicks the Liquidation. Uh, I'm just gonna click Future Sight. Clicks the Liquidation again. And there it is. He does get the Defense Drop. So that's what I was worried about earlier. But this is pretty much GG, guys. He gets another Defense Drop. Again, doesn't really matter. We're just gonna Scald to guarantee put him... Actually, it was not even a... Like, if he had HP, the off chance he had HP, I just thought Scald would change the role on Future Sight. But I'm pretty sure Future Sight was 108% min. So we do get the Scald in the burn. And Future Sight is going to take out Barascuda as Slowbro Mega picks up its first kill of the season. And we take the 4-0 dub over MS-23 and the British Blazikins. I thought for a second this game was probably going to get out of hand because I feel like maybe when I had Articuno in at plus two, I maybe got a little bit carried away and I, I me not keeping my scarfer was probably not the best play in this game and not having a double scarfer, not having Sucker Punch on Urshifu. Uh, but I felt like I needed the coverage moves on Urshifu, especially considering he had mons like Kobalion, Zapdos, uh, Rotom, Wash. I just needed the coverage moves on a lot of my mons. I'm, I was quite surprised at his team selection based on the game, but uh, this could also just be him bringing a lesser team for me before the playoffs because he is 4-2 and two now after this game. I'm not sure the exact differential. But guys, now we move above 500. We are 4 and 3 plus 4. Uh, this has been a really fun run in this league right now. I think, I'm pretty sure we're like 4 and 0 plus 15 since taking over this team. And it's been a really, it's been a real blast using this offensive team. Uh, thank you all for watching and uh, I hope you all have a good day. Uh, my next upload should be coming up soon, guys. Uh, I got a TBA game against Blitz. I got a BDL playoff game versus Mr. Polo. So hopefully those will go up soon as well. Neither of the games have happened as of yet. Uh, so this is TRT77 guys signing off. I'll catch you all on the next one.